With cyclone season approaching, it was important that we find a good safe creek that we could retreat to in case of danger. But first, it was time to go find a beer and have a look at one of the most unusual dinghy pontoons that I think I've ever seen. Well, we're heading into the sailing club and we found a little bit of bush tucker. We're not that far from the bush, I suppose. So these leaves here, I guess it's a medium sized tree. And these little pods, when they ripen from those green ones, they become this. And these are edible. So this outer shell is quite hard. Ah. But you get through there and there's a nice white edible kernel. Lots of fat, lots of protein. Hmm. Tastes like peanuts. They taste different to peanut. He's a bit. Bush tucker is a pretty hard affair in Australia. Yeah, but that's not too bad for bush tucker. Pretty good. It's not as good as a macadamia. Mm. It's about, about on par with peanuts, I think. Raw mm. peanuts. What have you been up to? There's a bit going on, but most importantly, we went and got this bit of bamboo from a thicket that we found ashore. And we just have this gidgy head laying around. It's not much, not much use. It doesn't, it doesn't fit on anything that we've got. But I'm just, uh, just reaming out. What are we doing? Just reaming out the end of this bamboo. So I've just cut it about that high above one of these natural joints. So they're really quite strong. And I've reamed it out to about there, so it fits pretty good. So I'm just going to continue. Just coring that out with my pocket knife here. <laughs> <laughs> so what we'll do now is I'm going to use some epoxy. It can't all be bushcraft, all right? We're not going to go and, we're not going to go and melt down any uh, black boy gum or anything like that. <laughs> so and black boys are plant. I'm not. Yeah, don't worry. Um, so yeah, we're going to use a bit of epoxy. I'm going to throw that in there, and then what a lot of the what a lot of the locals do when they make their spear. Um, they might have used to have wrapped it with kangaroo sinew or something like that. Now they use, I don't know, probably about 50 kilo mono fishing line. Yeah. So I'll sand this to shape, round off that corner, wrap it with mono fishing line, and then another coat of epoxy. This bamboo, it's sort of straight, but, um, and I did just throw it over a fire while we were having a barbecue last night. If you heat up timber and then sort of bend it to the shape you want, you can straighten it. So we're not going to be going into the Olympics throwing this like a javelin. This is just for when we're walking around the mud flats, you know, we might see the odd little tasty stingray or shovel nose or most importantly mud crabs. You know, we can just sort of be getting along and get ourselves some dinner. So nothing groundbreaking, but um, it should be useful to have when we go cruising around. Man's got to have a spear. I guess some people might look at this and just go, oh, the day's ruined. But for Pascal and I, we haven't seen rain like this in over nine months, so we are absolutely thrilled.
So we got some clothes rinsing going on there. Yeah. Never missed an opportunity to do laundry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we just love laundry around right here. <laughs> well, not our usual adventure, but today we're going to check out the public transport of Nullanboy um, to get from Gove Harbour, 10 k's down the road and get to the post office because we have to grab our Simrad TP10 autopilot and send it off because it stopped working, which was a bitter disappointment. Um, we do have a wind vane and that works when there's lots of wind and we're sailing, but those times when we're motoring we like to put it on the autopilot, otherwise you're stuck out there for hours. And steering. So, yeah, I rang up the guys uh, that handle the returns on these and he said, do you have a spare? <laughs> so, and um, I don't know of many 30-footers that carry a spare $1,500 autopilot, so I had to disappoint him and say, no, I just bought the one $1,500 unit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're going to send this back um, and hopefully we'll get a nice shiny new one and it's all good. I, I did look um, on some forums and some people were saying that these are not waterproof. Now, I really hope that that's not the case because you would not make something designed for a 30 foot boat and smaller for these ones um, without it being waterproof. I mean, look, Pascal's phone, waterproof. So this is an autopilot, but we'll see how it goes. We're not going to make any disparaging remarks about them yet. <laughs> All right, let's let's go for a trip on into Nullan Boy. bucks later. <laughs> Got our box going back to Sydney. A meat pie. Makes a change from all I've seen. So what are all the bad things that can happen to us here, Pascal? We can get chomped by a crocodile. Yep. We can get stung by a box jellyfish. Okay. I feel right at home then. Yeah. There's <laughs> nothing changed. Nothing's changed. Well, beer cans laying around. That's changed a bit. Now these little wetlands just behind the dunes on the beaches are really common up here. This one's close to a town, so it's been used as a bit of a dumping ground, which is unfortunate. Like in a, in a natural state, these would be pretty important areas. Bit of tucker there, the paper bark. As we were getting some groceries, we caught this eye catching headline from the Northern Territory Times always hard hitting. Well, in colder places, uh, we like to make our own bacon, but this is well and truly the tropics now. The cyclones are coming, it's hot, it's humid. So we've had to make do with smoked tuna, smoked mackerel, and this is not sausage, this is smoked roe. And I can barely talk, because my mouth is just, just drooling. You better eat the mackerel roe. Right. People are gonna think that you... Let's give this thing a whirl. That we don't need it. But we do, we love it. Oh, look at that. Let me have a look. It really looks like sausage. It, yeah. 
So what have you done here? This is um, brown sugar. What's the what's the recipe we've used this time, Pascal? Brown sugar, salt, pepper, and then smoked. Cured for two, three days this time. Oh. And then smoked for 20 minutes. It's perfect because the extra curing time's really firmed it up. Mm. And it's it's delicious. And we we smoked it with a tree just off the local beach here, Casuarina. Yep. So and it's it's delicious and spicy. This smoked tuna, the, the belly part, it tastes like a smoked Christmas ham. <laughs> it's unreal. Awesome. One of our commenters said um, to use honey in these cures and we've done that and it was awesome so nice guy if you if you're watching that was a brilliant tip and if people have had real smoked ham not factory smoked ham with nitrates and everything else like that you'll know that this is closer to the color of a traditional smoked ham as well that's right it? it's not, yeah it's not that pink color yeah <laughs> that's incredible mm. slightly different texture but the taste is uncanny Now, if I could give you any bit of advice about coming into Gove Harbour, if it's ever on your itinerary, it would be this. Don't come in at night time. The harbour is absolutely full of stuff like this. Some of these boats were victims of cyclones past, and some were victims of improperly secured anchor or mooring shackles. So be warned friends, mouse your shackles. I was fairly interested in using the careening poles, but as I looked at them at low tide, I could see that the rearmost one had quite a bit of rust, so we skipped it, and I just scrubbed the boat in the harbour. Listen to that, the poles were perfect. <laughs> we actually need one of these for our boat. Maybe we should salvage it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got a couple of screws too. Other people have salvaged the screws. I tried to stop it with some foam. Yeah. But then it just got to all of these. All of these are just blisters of rust ready to go. So this is a bilge a bilge keeler. Um, and one of our one of our commenters, um, our early commenters actually, he's got a Westerly over in Britain. He's got one of these, a bilge keeler. And they do, they stand up nicely when the when the tide goes out, they can stand up on their bum and then just refloat, but this old girl won't refloat anymore. Be careful about the boat you get. Make sure you can always afford it, because sometimes the dream doesn't end well. If 
there's a collection of dodgy repair jobs, I reckon this one would have gone down in history. A bit of acrylic and half a tube of Sikaflex. Yeah, that just didn't work, did it? <laughs> just rusting away. Yeah. Just just evidence. Do I open it again? Just one in a long chain of crimes that's happened to this boat. Early season cyclones coming across Arnhem Land will be going from west to east, if history holds true, which means the winds will be rotating clockwise around and coming from our north. And as they pass or go down to the Gulf, they can come from the east as well. So that was where we needed most of our protection. Now knowing where the wind was going to come from, we were quite content that Gove is an excellent harbour and we were interested in these creeks up in the northeast corner because they would give us protection from the north and east. Now with plan in hand, it was time to put that into action. So we sailed around the corner to go and have a look. While in harbour, I did a bit of maintenance on the wind vane. Lubricated things up, tightened a few things, and now it is just steering a dead straight course. It was being a bit erratic before, so what have we learned from this? A little bit of maintenance leads to properly functioning equipment, which is just an outrageous idea. That looked perfect. So the reason I want this creek is it's got a small catchment. It's got internet towers over it. So during a big cyclone, those towers, maybe they'll work, maybe they won't. But the lead up to it will be able to track the cyclone all the way up, make calls, all the rest of it. Um, yeah, it's a good little creek. I hope we can get in there tomorrow. Our first priority was to check the Northern Creek because that looked the most suitable for our needs. It's one hour till low tide. Uh -huh. So I'm going to just quickly race up there, have a look what the fishing's like, and then at low tide I'll make my way back to the boat. Um, yeah. And the low tide will be 0 0.8 metres. Yeah, so as long as I can get back to the boat and it's not sandbars the whole way, then on the high tide, even in needs, we should be able to get in there. So this isn't too bad. The trees could be a bit higher, but south to north, we're protected in here. East is not a problem. West, so we've got all round protection. My rule will float here on low tides, but I could push up the creek a little bit further. Um, and by throwing out her halyards down to the, the ground, I could make her stay upright, even if we dried. So this isn't too bad. It's not too bad. With the Northern Creek checked, then we scooted down to check the Southern Creek in case the boats of Gove had the same idea as us and we needed an additional bolt hole to run to.
So we're back to a very comfortable 30 centimetres under the keel. We're at a 2.5 metre tide at the moment. Um, so we're going in on what we would expect to be the lowest high water. That's neat high water. Mm. At the moment we're coming up the springs. So at the moment we're doing this course at about 2.5 metres. But to, this morning it's going to rise up to about 2.7. So if we stick. Yesterday coming in with the dinghy, I also marked um, high spots. So there's a, there's a rock back there covered in sharp barnacles and stuff like that. And I marked it on the GPS on the iPhone here. I expected to get a little shallow because as I went up here, um, I actually couldn't get further in the dinghy on yesterday's low tide. Part of the research we used to pick the creek, but also to sort of get a, a rough line that we're going to use, um, we did look on Google Earth, so a nice modern tool that's very useful. So at this point in the creek, it's still too wide for our purposes. We want it a lot closer in so we can tie into the mangroves. And it's not quite deep enough yet, so... Water. Okay. So it's about two metres in here. Not too bad. Got southerly protection. Right there at the mouth there was some there was some good depth. Um, and nice higher trees. We're starting to get a bit low here. There's a bend further up. We'll go and have a look at what the depth's like, and I think that there's bigger trees there. This little stretch, I'm not that impressed by the height of the trees. If we look at a storm surge of two metres, we'll be up in the weather. Yep, so we want taller like what we saw earlier. I like what's happening a bit further up here. So it's some really bad weather. Um, if the cyclone's coming, if the cyclone's to the east of us and it's tracking down into the Gulf of Carpentarias, like uh, historically some really bad ones have, uh, from the east and from the south, we want we want our best protection. If we can get a spot just in here, I'd be quite happy with this because we do have high country um, to the east and south of us. Right. And it's narrow. Mm. These trees tying into them, they're not, they're not great. I want something a bit sturdier. We don't want to be in a curve because the water will be accelerating. But here's not bad. We've got some big trees to tie into. We've got good shelter. So solid timber for tie-ups. Where are we? Westerly protection, easterly, but more important, north and south. We're good. We're real good. So category one, two, even up to a three, you could probably um, you could probably get away with throwing an anchor in. Maybe one or two ropes. Um, but if we get cat four or five. And we need to be in a position where we can firmly tie in um, with all the ropes that we've got. And we've got a, we've got a few ropes.
Not bad. <laughs> As we've said in previous videos, Marul doesn't have any transverse thrust. When you go in reverse, the propeller's not going to walk the, the backside to port. Um, but it does stop you from going forward. So you give it enough soot, um, you can just hold it while the forward momentum keeps carrying it through. Well done. We've christened the new spear. So, since you last saw this spear, um, I've coated it with epoxy and I also fiberglassed the tip there and really embedded the head. What's it got? Ah, oh, look at that! <laughs> it is full. This is a big It's cat. a big crab. So, look at those nippers. Oh, yeah. They're huge. <laughs> Yeah, look at that thing. Oh. That's a mighty crab. So, I've got a pretty big head, so I'll just put it next to my head to compare it. <laughs> look out. Look out. <laughs> I can't even imagine what would happen if you grabbed my nose right now. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button because it makes it more likely that YouTube will suggest our video to a broader audience. Also, we'd love to hear your feedback. So head over to the comments and drop us a line.